All right, I'm here to talk to you about NISX as a service. Glenn Sullivan, Senior Director here of Product at Infobox. Um, very excited about NISX as a service because it is the offering uh, for folks that want no footprint from an appliance, virtual or physical standpoint, right? Um, this solves a, a major, you know, uh, deployment scenario that we that we you know is a real challenge for our customers. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of history because to really understand how we've got here with as a service, we need to talk about you know what we have as a current deployment model. So this is NIOS on the left here. So it's a grid based technology. You deploy an appliance and you give it a role. There's a grid. Uh, there's a grid manager and a grid manager candidate for for backup for managing the grid. You have different grid members that do different things, internal DNS, external DNS, uh, local DHCP. Um, the reference architecture that Cricket Lou has put out for how to design this has, you know, basically a dozen boxes for a basic deployment for NIOS because it's meant to be highly resilient from a DNS and DHCP standpoint. So we recognize that this deployment model in NIOS was awesome for on-prem and awesome for grid you know, management and, and being isolated and making sure that it has everything that you need you know, deployed in an appliance and a grid. But obviously, as folks move to a more of a branch model, have you know, locations everywhere that need to be locally survivable, we recognize the need for a lighter weight deployment on-prem. So the thing that sits in your environment that actually puts packets on the wire, it serves DNS and DHCP protocol, but all of the management is done from a portal. This was Blocks One DDI. So this came out, uh, you know, August of 2019. Uh, lots of users using this, love it, great lo local survivability. Um, serves a serves a purpose of having, you know, the distinction the distinction between what happens in the cloud SaaS model and what's delivered on prem. But there is a need to go even further. Right. I, I, the feedback that we got from some customers was this is great, but I have a, you know, a gas station that I can't put anything in. There's no VMs to run infrastructure on and there's no closet space for an appliance running DNS and DHCP. And I don't want to just use whatever DNS and DHCP because I really like your DNS and DHCP, but I don't want to deploy anything on prem. The other thing that this didn't address is cloud use cases for serving DNS in the cloud. We'd say if you want to serve DNS in the cloud and you don't want to use uh, you know, RAW 53 Azure or cloud DNS, you just take a virtual version of our appliance and you put it in the cloud environment, which people do to great effect and, and it works well. But then, of course, you hit the antibodies, the allergies, the heartburn, whatever metaphor you want to use to the cloud teams who don't want to deploy servers. So it was clear that we needed a server, a serverless solution for this infrastructure free solution. So that's where NIOS X as a service comes in. And NIOS X as a service, it uh, has the ability to take an IPsec tunnel uh, from an on from an on prem you know deployment, right? So it uses whatever infrastructure you have. If you've got a router on prem, you've got a firewall on prem, you've got an SD WAN device on prem, it'll accept the connections into our cloud deployments and it will serve DNS and DHCP from those cloud deployments, right? So now you can have a branch that has enterprise grade DDI supplying DNS and DHCP to the, to the workers at those locations without having to have anything on-prem. Now, this doesn't work in all use cases, right? You could, like we talked about in a previous session, we talked about a hospital, right, that needs local survivability in case they lose internet, in case they lose, you know, power, in case they lose WAN. Well, we're not taking off the NIOS X virtual deployment off the table, right? They can still deploy a NIOS X server on-prem, host DNS and DHCP from that, and still have it be cloud managed to cloud control. So this is really tailored to a knowledge worker site where if they lose internet, all of their applications they use on a daily basis are SaaS, so they just you know go take a walk or use their hotspot anyway. So this is uh, really tailored to those types of deployments from an on-prem perspective. But let's not forget the cloud perspective, right? So we've got lots of folks that want to do DNS in a centralized way. They, they've recognized all the issues that we've talked about with having you know different DNS infrastructures between Azure, uh, AWS, and GCP, and they want a single way to manage DNS, right? So that's fine. We've given them that solution with as a service, and we use the cloud connectivity to communicate with those cloud environments. So if they want to use a transit gateway, to do VPC connection from our environment to their environment, we can do that. If you want to use uh, GCP uh, private link, we can do that, or GCP private service connect. See, they, all the clouds have different names for these things. <laughs> but whatever magical not native connectivity they want to use to connect from our 
environment hosting DNS for them, they can do as well. And you might think it's a DNS only use case because obviously you don't need DHCP in the cloud. Well, we can also support DHCP for branches that happen to use the cloud as a backbone, right? So say you're using one of the solutions to connect all of your, uh, your branches up to you know, AWS or GCP to provide DHCP as a, as a managed service as a, you know, in a shared VPC model, we support that as well. So they, they can have their branches communicate to their global uh, centralized GCP deployment, and then that GCP deployment can talk to us and we can hand out DNS to DHCP for those on-prem deployments as well. So it's, it's kind of a mix, whatever solution that you need from a DNS and DHCP perspective, we can handle uh, using IOSX as a service. Um, the last thing we want to touch on is the security uh, in this perspective, because we've talked a lot about APIs today, about you know having to know different APIs for different environments or managing different you know consoles for for managing DNS across the board. Well, as a service simplifies this, right? Because now I've got one place that I'm providing that service, that one place where I'm providing DNS and DHCP. Mm -hmm. And I'm controlling the mechanisms to which I connect that service to my other environments. So now I have one place where some where we got to do the permissions and the access controls and the granular, or, you know, RBAC and all of that. We have one place that we have to control instead of you know five, six, seven, eight different you know infrastructures that we have to manage whenever anyone comes into or leaves the company or you know what has an API level control 